So upper GI endoscopy is a, a telescopic examination of the food pipe, your stomach, and a part of your small bowel. Uh, it's a straightforward procedure, but uh, does involve a person to swallow a tube down uh, the throat, or uh, sometimes we do it through the nose as well. But, uh, what happens? I think it's something that uh, you know people uh, when they have symptoms of dyspepsia, or uh, some people have problem with acid reflux or difficulty in swallowing, and there are several other causes that or symptoms that people seek attention. So you perform, we ask uh, for an upper GI endoscopy and uh, you come on an empty stomach for six to 12 hours. And, um, uh, and then we give you all the uh, preparatory leaflet, what to do, what not to do uh, during that period. And it's a day case procedure. So you come in, have your test done and then you go home after that. So you could have a choice of having a sedative or just with a spray or you can have a spray and sedation. Um, so it, it's patient's preference and sometimes the clinician preference as well, what they want to use as well. Um, I think uh, when you talk about a GI endoscopy, uh, it's uh, really important to read the leaflets which have been given to you, uh, follow the instructions, um, so uh, you have to have an empty stomach. You're, if you're on certain medications, you'll be asked to stop, um, not to eat and drink. And, and these are really important things that you can do. Obviously, stress, anxiety, if you've not had a test done before, uh, I think it's difficult, but um, you may find somebody who've already had something done, or you may speak to the doctor about it, who has uh, requested the endoscopy for you. And uh, most of the time, it's, it's usually okay. Um, I think it's not a general thing that people uh, have to have it checked unless they have got symptoms. And uh, if you have symptoms, then you should seek medical attention and especially the, when the symptoms are you can't get rid of. Uh, so that's really important. It can uh, show tumors depending on the symptoms and uh, um, yes, uh, it's stomach cancer and esophageal cancer, duodenal or small bowel cancer. So we can detect with an upper GI endoscopy or we can detect some abnormalities which are precancerous like uh, people have Barrett's esophagus due to uh, chronic acid reflux. It's a change in the lining of the food pipe, which is again a precancerous condition. The cancer risk is low, but nonetheless, these are important uh, tests. Uh, once it's detected, then you go under a surveillance program. You find polyps as well in the stomach. Uh, most of them are benign polyps, but some of them are important that they need follow-ups. It all depends on uh, what is found on a PGI endoscopy and uh, whether we found the cause of the symptoms that uh, the patient has presented with. Uh, sometimes you need scans, sometimes you need other, um, other tests uh, like gastric emptying studies, breath tests, um, helicobacter type of test. So I think there are various tests which can be done, but it all depends. Uh, they're not always needed, uh, but it all depends upon the symptoms of the patient. So if uh, you have dyspepsia, uh, especially if you're over the age of 55, um, then I think you should seek medical help. Um, and if uh, as mentioned earlier, you've got other symptoms like weight loss, you become anemic, you've got difficulty in swallowing the food down, you, you feel that uh, your stools have changed color like black. Um, and sometimes they, these are really important uh, symptoms to look out for and um, seek medical attention. And then um, your GP will uh, refer you for, um, uh, for endoscopy. Uh, 